Hey everybody, I'm Allie and this is part two of my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, April 25th. Patty is walking on thin ice and it is starting to crack. You know, she fabricated this entire pregnancy and miscarriage thinking it it would cause Jack to have sympathy for her and I can almost see the wheels turning in her head at this point. Like, Dr. Stibrop you know, like, it's all so obvious. And, oh yeah, it's Phyllis's fault that I lost the baby. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, like, if Emily were telling the truth, if she were being genuine, and Jack accused her of not only falsifying the pregnancy, but faking the miscarriage, she should be so outraged with him that she should leave him. I mean, j her reaction alone show, to, you know, to the lie, shows that she's lying. I, I don't know. I think that Jack deserves to be happy, and it's, it makes me sad seeing him being led along. Um, I, I really, I can't wait for him to be reunited with the real Emily. Um, at this point, I'm really looking for that light at the end of the tunnel, uh, but I wonder if it'll ever even be the same, because he's probably going to have some pretty bad associations with that face. I don't know. Um, hopefully, the new Heather will bring some new light onto this uh, entire storyline. Um, she'll get the, the, oh, let's say it together. We need Heather to get the DNA test. <laughs> I'm so sick of DNA tests. Well, we need her to get the DNA test to prove that it's actually Emily that's in the padded cell. What do you guys think of new Heather? Do you like her? Do you, I think she came from another soap, so there's probably a lot of people who are crossover watchers and, and love her. I don't know. I'm, 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 my jury's still out. I want to, I, I like to give everybody a chance, so I'm going to give it another couple weeks and see how it sets with me, and I'll definitely give you my opinion on that later. Um, Stacey Haddock, the off, the, uh, the author, the actress who plays Emily is excellent this week. I'm really enjoying her. Um, I kind of hope she stays on the show. I'm getting used to her. I like her a little bit. Um, and Anne, Anne, of course. I'm, I have to say that even though there's so much about this storyline that is far-fetched and crazy, I am really, really looking forward to seeing evil Emily <laughs> take on evil Lauren. Well, evil Lauren suggested this week that she and evil Emily do a murder trade. You kill my enemy and I'll kill yours. It sounds good, right? Um, I don't know. I'm surprised that uh, evil Lauren isn't out for Phyllis anyway, because Phyllis was instrumental in Sheila's death, if I recall correctly. Um, but I guess... Evil Lauren is just too busy um, enjoying real Lauren's life, given trying to give love into her husband and and uh, I don't know, ignoring her kid and uh, spending her money, of course. Uh, real Lauren had a convo with Michael this week that was so sweet, and I really it made me cry, having uh, seeing Lauren and Michael reunite after so long apart, um, even if it was just by phone, made me cry. And I was hoping for a secret message of some sort. I was hoping that Lauren would say something that Michael would know, <laughs> but that didn't happen. Um, but even though that didn't happen, Michael still senses that something isn't right. He is a very smart man and he has very good instincts and he moved out. He moved out of the house. He took uh, Fen with him and moved out. Um, I guess he just can't stay in the house with a lady who crushes a spider. That was sad. <laughs> um, in the meantime, Lauren and Jana are doing their best to um, break free of their bondage. Um, when is Ryder going to man up? When is he going to stop being a wimp, stop, follow stop being a follower, and, and man up to these two bitches and show them who's boss? <laughs> waiting for. And when the storyline finally climaxes, what I'm looking forward to seeing is Ryder making that choice between good and evil and choosing good and helping uh, save the girls. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, but in the meantime, Jana is using her junior Girl Scout skills to start a fire um, and send up smoke signals <laughs> to try to get them rescued. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know if it's a good idea to start an uncontrolled battery acid fire when you're stuck in a cage. 
Hey, Tucker, those surveillance tapes that you have of Adam viewing the Jabot bids would have been helpful months ago. <laughs> and I wonder if those same video cameras caught Jill and Tucker scampering around his office in their skivvies. <laughs> I wonder. Um, well, now Tucker has essentially blackmailed Catherine for control of Jabot once again. I think that that company has had more owners than Jill has had men. But uh, but. <laughs> um, I definitely see that we are moving toward a Ashley and Tucker re er, er, an Ashley and Tucker relationship. Um, there's just too much tension with Jabot control for them not to be headed toward a relationship. Um, and of course, a Neil and Tucker rivalry will come out of that, which will be interesting. So Neil and Ashley had sex this week, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Of course, um, I love Neil's bedroom. It was like a chick magnet. <laughs> um, it was fun, but I sensed hesitation on both parts. Did you? I wonder. Um, I can't help but notice that Ashley jumped into bed with Neil right after she had that fight with Tucker. And Neil even mentioned, hey, he was, he was a little concerned. He was like, I thought we were taking it slow. But she jumps into bed with him right after that incident. I find that to be a little bit suspect. Um, and Tucker found himself a high-class hoe in the uh, athletic club uh, bar lounge area um, and uh, and and so he did that <laughs> right after their fight so I don't know I think these two are I think these two are digging each other I think it's it cannot be a coincidence that they both jumped into bed with other people right after that explosive meeting between the two of them um, and I guess more importantly the most important part of this tougher thing is that Murphy almost kicked his ass this week and I I enjoyed that so much I love Murphy <laughs> and I like seeing him defending Catherine's honor um, by the way I watched a movie uh, on Saturday night uh, called Mulholland Drive which you've probably all seen uh, but I hadn't um, and Murphy was in it he's he's in the movie and I couldn't even believe it because it's a it's a David Lynch film and David Lynch is very strange I love him of course but um, I wasn't expecting to see a friendly face. It's like this this weird dreamy movie and then all of a sudden out of nowhere it's Murphy's face and Murphy is playing a not so nice guy. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys would like the movie or not but you could rent it and see movie if you're or rent it and see Murphy if you would like. Okay that about does it for me this week. I hate this curl. It, it shows up in all of my videos <laughs> and I hate it. Like you don't notice it when I'm just out you know, you can't see it as much when I'm out in public, but because it's, you know, it's like this, it's this, this head-on version of me, it just sticks out, but normally, like, my hair's not that bad, but it won't go away. I'm getting a haircut next week, so hopefully next time you'll see me, I'll have better hair. Uh, <laughs> not that anyone cares anyway, but anyway, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the show this week, and um, that you're enjoying these videos, and that you leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. It's always really fun um, hearing from you. Uh, anyway... You can also go to my website at buttonhead.org. I Twitter, by the way, if you want to check that out. Um, all that stuff is on my website, and I don't know. I guess that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye.